What's up, YouTube? So I saw a meme the other day that was pretty grim, but in one case, it kind of rang true. So on one hand, I think it rings a little bit true because uh, musicians, especially uh, dance music, can bring much needed relief to people that may be feeling the ills of isolation. However, on the other hand, I think if everybody does their part, we might actually be able to save this ship from sinking. So I think as musicians and DJs, it's important for us to you know, stay at home and stream music and stuff that's going to, you know, do our part at least for what we possibly can do to bring relief to people um, in the best way we know how to do. So I actually wrote an article the other day for IDM Mag. I'm going to post the link in the description with a couple of tips and tricks for those who aren't familiar with streaming about getting into streaming online for the first time. And um, I'm still getting quite a lot of questions about how to set things up and stuff. So I figured I might just follow it up with a video with a couple of step-by-step uh, -step instructions for those who are still struggling uh, with getting it all started. So first things first, I wanna discuss choosing the right platform to stream your music on. So of course there are various platforms that you can choose, um, not just the kind of big three, but I'm gonna focus in on the big three and tell you guys a little bit about the pros and cons, and maybe that'll give you some insight to choosing your own, uh, which may not be from this list. So first and foremost, obviously the one I've had the most experience with is YouTube. So the pros about YouTube is that it's uh, content longevity is very, very long. So what that means is I can post a video today and it may still be relevant in five or 10 years time. Whereas with stuff like Facebook uh, Live and with Twitch, um, that's very much not the case. On average, posts generally remain relevant for a couple of days at max. So with something like music, especially if you're creating music, I feel like YouTube is definitely the platform to use because you might want it to be remembered many years down the line. However, with stuff like DJ sets, it might not be that easy. So for example, in cases where, you know, copyright is a thing, if you're using tracks which you've bought off Beatport and that kind of thing, and you're playing a DJ set, you don't need to think about content longevity because the stream is probably not gonna be saved on the online platform. So various platforms like Twitch will allow you to stream if there is content that is copyrighted, what it'll do, it'll remove that audio from the posted video. And for like DJs and stuff who are doing live streams, you know, often it's about that moment. You know, you don't necessarily need that set to be remembered like 10 years down the line because you've probably done a couple of other sets, you know, in that kind of time frame. Whereas I think it's a little bit different for live performers and stuff like that. So obviously, um, you know, copyright law and streaming services changes quite frequently. Um, and I think even recently, you know, Facebook changed uh, the way that they work um, with streaming and stuff like that. So a couple of DJs that I know that have streamed on Facebook They'll say that, um, you know, if a track that they're busy streaming gets recognized as copyright content, um, all it'll do is it'll flag the stream and send the copyright owner a notification and won't allow them to save that stream onto the platform, but it'll allow them to continue doing the stream. <clears throat> so, of course, for those guys getting into streaming for the first time, using a platform like Facebook is probably going to be a good idea because you've already got a network um, of followers and friends who are probably gonna tune in for the first time. So it's also worth mentioning that there is a platform called Restream, which allows you to stream to all of the platforms at once. So let's get into some of the more uh, finer details. So a lot of the time, uh, specifically with mobiles and stuff, I see guys streaming DJ sets and using the direct audio feed from the mic of the phone. While I understand that not everybody has access to webcams and high quality audio streams and stuff like that, there are ways of getting around this. So. One way that I've picked up, um, or that I've actually used before, um, before actually buying my webcam. So one way of getting around this is to use your phone and do something like a Skype call or a Google Hangouts call to another account that's on your computer. And then in your streaming software, which I'm gonna get into shortly, you can screen capture that video feed and pop it into your streaming software. And then you run a direct line audio into your sound card. I'm gonna get into the hardware and stuff a little bit later and you get a clean audio feed, and it might not be the best quality video feed, but at the end of the day, I think with streaming music, the audio quality is definitely uh, more preferred than video quality. And I definitely think that using some kind of video where the audience can see your performance 
uh, is definitely beneficial. I mean, that's obviously why they're attending the show. Um, I wouldn't just, you know, put a screen grab of your tractor software or whatever you're using to mixing, um, to mix in. Uh, I would actually try, you know, do the Google Hangouts thing or invest in a webcam or something like that. So the software I recommend for streaming is called OBS uh, because it's free and it's very, very easy to use. Um, just excuse how uh, this trippy visual is working right now because um, I'm obviously doing the screen grab using this exact software while recording it. Um, but this is cool because it allows you to switch between scenes over here. So you could have multiple cameras switching between them. Um, you can switch between audio feeds over here. As you can see, I've got my microphone over here. I've got my desktop audio, which is like my other sound card input. I'm going to get into that just now over here. And I've actually got a button that I use to switch those two inputs if I need that to be done. Um, of course, if you're doing a DJ stream or something like that, you're probably not going to be talking on the mic. So switching those audio inputs is not maybe not as important. But then again, maybe you want to do an intro or something like that. So that's always going to... Um, that's always a plus there, being able to set up these routings and stuff as you want. Um, you can fade between the scenes and all sorts of stuff like that. So it's very, uh, very extensive what you can do with the software. It's almost like um, a full on broadcast system uh, inside your computer. So one thing to be aware of is how to set it up to actually stream. So on your various platforms like YouTube and Facebook and uh, Twitch or whatever, you will have a stream manager, um, depending on how you're actually connecting uh, to the software, it'll be in uh, how you're actually connecting to that platform, it'll be in various different places. Um, but in YouTube, for example, it's in the top right, you just click, uh, I think it's add video, go live. And on that page, it'll give you what's called a stream key. So over here in the settings, you'll then want to go over to the stream panel, punch in over here exactly which platform you're going to be using. In this case, it'll be YouTube. And you want to punch in the stream key over here. Make sure nobody in the stream actually sees the stream key because then they could hijack your stream. Um, but yeah, so you'd punch that in there, press OK, and then press Start Streaming when you're ready. That should explain the software side of things. Uh, let's have a look at some of the hardware. That'll probably make your life a little bit easier. So like I mentioned, having a webcam is going to be so much easier than, you know, using your phone to connect to Google Hangouts and stuff like that. You know, that kind of thing could reduce the amount of bandwidth that you've got on your network or something like that, and then reduce the quality of the, the stream, which might not be a good thing. Um, so getting a webcam is always a good idea um, if you are going to do this stuff long term, which I think is probably going to be realistic, uh, given the current global uh, crisis. And this guy is actually incredibly cheap and it's able to do HD video streams. So it's the same quality as some much higher end cameras, um, but obviously doesn't have all of those features that most of us won't be using anyway. So OBS does have a system to, aud to capture desktop audio. However, it doesn't work with every sound card. In fact, most sound cards that I've tried it with, it's pretty dodgy. I haven't ever actually got it to work. So generally speaking, when I'm capturing desktop audio, um, I'd either use a separate computer, so I'd run the audio out of that computer into my main computer's audio input, or I would use a separate sound card. So something like a Zoom H1N is an incredibly affordable, actually really good investment for most music producers because, I mean, you can use it to sample stuff um, and also just record stuff without having to open up your DAW or turn on your computer or something like that. Say, for example, you've got a synth and you've just created a cool patch, you could just plug it into this and record it. So keep in mind that the line input is generally kind of designed for lapel mics and stuff. So I think it does have like a plus 10 or plus 20 dB gain on it. So when you are recording into it, you're going to want to turn your master level down. But one thing to note is it's actually got a headphone output that gives you the direct line in monitor. So you can quickly tell if you are clipping or not. So actually this is um, I've been using it more for my streams than anything else because um, it can actually work as an audio interface if you just plug it in with the USB. Um, then failing that, obviously, you know, if you've got a traditional audio interface, something that has a external input, um, something like this Tractor Audio 6 over here, um, that's actually got a main input as well as the output. Um, a lot of the more, um, how can I say, a lot of the more affordable audio interfaces will just have like a stereo main output, but then the inputs will be for microphones. So that's one thing to double check. You don't want to be running uh, your stream's audio through microphone preamps and gaining them that way. 
So yeah, like I said, ideally it does help to have a second computer to be able to handle the stream and a second one to be able to handle your DAW or your audio or whatever computer music stuff you're doing um, just to lighten the load of the CPU because uh, streaming video can be pretty intensive on the CPU. So that's also one thing to take note of and it might actually be a little bit easier to set up if you've got a laptop which may have a webcam built in. You could just run your audio output into the audio input of your other PC, open up a Google Hangouts from your laptop to your PC, and you're good to go. Cool. I hope that helped you guys out. Like I said, pretty simple, but I've actually been getting a ton of questions about it, so hopefully that answered some of those. Let me know what you think in the comments. See you guys next time. A big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel.